delighted to say join us now for her debut in front of camera on McLean's TV but a regular on the social club Laura James it's lovely to have you here we're going to talk about Irish League football yes. which is one of your passion indeed football sports your passion the Irish League is it in good shape or is it in bad shape that's a really good question um, in many that, ways that's why I'm here uh, <laughs> this is some start isn't it Anima? there you go it's not your first time is yeah, it go ahead go on, go on. Um, in many ways it is in good shape um, you know you, you're seeing that the effort that's being put in, in over training, um, the demands that come from having to play in so many other cup competitions, um, the pressure in terms of being able to stay up. You know, Warren Point haven't been on such a bad run now, and and, and all of a sudden people are looking at Dungan the Swifts and other um, and other clubs and thinking, gosh, you know, what, what, how how tense is it going to be at the bottom? So in in terms of what's going on on the pitch, yes, it's in good shape. Um, the football league is going to undergo um, a lengthy consultation in in connection with UEFA very soon to see where the major restructuring you know they're talking about summer football reducing the number of clubs that are going to be involved whether they are possibilities so off the pitch there's there's still a lot of work to be done the thing I would like about the Irish League you know and I haven't covered a lot of the matches this season too is it strikes me you know, you know again Swift's obviously beat the likes of Linfield it to me that showed that basically any team can win any match yeah, without, without a doubt. I mean, the, you know, the cliche is anyone can beat anybody else on, on their day. And you do see that. Um, for instance, you know, I mentioned the cup competition there. Crusaders were playing. That's right, don't worry about that. You're right, okay. <laughs> Crusaders were playing um, the semi-final against uh, Balamina United in the League Cup there. Um, and, you know, it, it looked for a while that that incredible unbeaten run that they've gone on was was under was under threat but you know they pushed it to extra time and won it so any anyone can give them a good game i mean you think the crusaders are very very strong at home that's just one example there, there are so many else within the league interesting you mentioned the league cup and the league cup obviously in the irish cup and this is the area i think of real concern for local football they can't get sponsorship no now that has to be a, a fault maybe not entirely of theirs but the people who govern the game deserve uh, a lot of criticism for that because that should not be allowed to have continued whenever we lost the Irish Cup sponsorship things should have been put in the situ a long long time ago I think there's a lot of things you can say in theory in in terms of marketing and advertising strategies um, we're, we're, we're coming out of the other end of an economic crisis you know for 10 years or more companies have been looking at right well where are we going to be able to slash our costs marketing absolutely advertising the first thing to go and that includes sponsorship in local football and and, and sport um, across the board you know we're not we're not dealing with companies like I think you're being too nice but look if I look at other sports they've all got sponsors like you know the Irish Cup the Irish Cup is the blue ribbon. It's the second competition, and I, I, I'm not going to sit here and let you say that to me. The fact, but that nobody will take it for. Out, but I, I think the IFA deserve a real kick up the <laughs> arse. No harm for this. I, I don't think it's been acceptable. <laughs> You'd be the right height to give it. I know, but I'm only. Like, I, but you know what I'm saying, dear. I, I think this and that. It's it's a it's a precious competition. It is, it, yeah. You know. The Irish Cup, yes. Um, the League Cup, and we had Iron Brew sponsoring it mm. the the year before. Um, now it's it's technically the Niffle League Cup. It's technically you know a, a title sponsorship <laughs> that the league organisers have taken, uh -huh. and in that in in that in itself is an admission of defeat. Um, I don't know how early on pitches are made to companies to say you know would you be interested in this they need to be made months 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 in advance of the draw being done they need to be made to when, when there's still a sponsor intact and say can you renew this sponsorship you know any marketeer will tell you that so maybe they're leaving it a little bit too late in which case yes kick them up the hole okay fair enough well, that's, <laughs> that's not the words out of you but there you go <laughs> family show but look apart from that uh, look at that, that's our bit of our uh, our grape and our, and our rant out of the way uh, the irish league now yep. uh, the Blues are obviously the favourites here with McLean's at this stage at five to six, Cliftonville three to one, Crusaders three to one, Portadown eighteens, Glen Torn twenties. In other words, you know, apart from those top three, there's nobody else interested. Are the Blues going to win it? Are they going? Are they going to get it? Or are Cliftonville beginning to go through the motions again of last season? The the thing about Cliftonville is, you know, have have they done it to the extent to convince, or are they just carrying their way through it? I mentioned Crusaders earlier. In in many ways, I mean, Crusaders have shown far greater consistency than Cliftonville have. Cliftonville can come out and, and uh, you know, really sort of win convincingly. 
Um, they can get much heavier wins on, on under their belt, um, but Crusaders just keep things ticking over nicely. And that's in many ways why North Belfast Derby is more interesting than a big two, in my opinion. But I still think Linfield will, will win the league. You look at who they've brought in. Um, Andy Wordsworth has done more than a job for them. Um, Ivan Sproul is a, is a fantastic signing. Yeah, I can't, it, yeah. can't wait yeah. to see how he um, how he really settles in. Um, and he looks already to be very, very happy there. Um, and and obviously Jimmy Callagher as well. Fingers crossed that that everything will be um, done and dusted. Well, with him. I don't have that uh, David Jeffrey video, you know, to hand. But you know, you know <laughs> big Davey, like you know, what a manager. You are not a great singer, but there you are, David. I think he, but he made an apology over that whole sort of you know bit of a. Uh, Stupid incident, but it shows you that the Blues still, no matter about it, after a difficult season last year where they won nothing, they're still going to be one of the the teams to beat, no matter what way you look at it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody's up for it when they go to Windsor. It's it is the most difficult ground to go to in the league. Um, it's the one where all eyes are on you, and interestingly enough, it's it's the one where an awful lot of clubs have really good records there. Um, Ballymallard United, until they lost a weeks ago, there um, had won their previous two games. Um, Ballymena always go there and, and you know turn them over. I mean, Lisbon Distillery were the club that always used to go to oh, Windsor and win, uh -huh. um, and now of course they're in the championship. So it, it's 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 picking up points away from home that isn't at Windsor, and that's what Linfield do. Now, your social club, which features heavily on McLean's, is a very, very enjoyable podcast with uh, uh, four well-known hacks. You obviously it's know good your laugh, business. isn't it? It is a good fun, <laughs> yeah. And you also touch as well on the international scene, which I want to talk to you about as well, too. Coming into 2014, we've got the Battle of the O'Neills, mm. Michael here north and Martin down, down below. Did Martin O'Neill, you know, people looked at it and, and said to themselves, you know, why would he go for the Republic? But... Is he looking to the European Championship, you know, with an extended amount of teams that can qualify? Oh, for there's the next 20 now that can. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, it, it, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of reality. I mean, everyone remembers sort of the, the Euro campaign in Poland and Ukraine, and um, they arguably have the, have the quality to do so. Um, with Keen alongside him, you can't ask for, for greater motivation, really, mm -hmm. to play because you know what's facing you if you don't. Um, but you know, I mean, a step out of management, a step out of the Premier League as well to take over to take over national a national team is um, is a huge gamble for any manager um, to be taken out of that club environment where you know day in day out your message is being heard um, is is a big risk. But I think that that's a very good point. You know, that's that's as far as he's looking ahead. The other thing I th I found about it too was whenever it was announced that he was going to be the manager, the lack of. Um, let's say animosity from people up here in the north from a lot of the fans he, you know, he sh it probably shows the respect he has now it could be different if Northern Ireland are on against the Republic you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know the fans just went well so that's it you know whereas I think a few years ago there might have been a wee bit more uh, animosity towards a decision like that I think you're absolutely right yeah a few years ago people wouldn't have let that lie um, it would be like I don't know possibly if Neil Lennon ever got the job there or something there there, there, there could be a degree of uh, of unrest but no there, there was there was um, there was a fair amount of respect given on this occasion and I think um, as Michael handled his appointment very well um, you might remember that on the same day Martin O'Neill was announced mm -hmm. Michael's um, contract extension of two years was announced as well and you know one of the first questions to him was well, you know what's going on south of the border. Are you afraid that Martin's going to poach your players? And he says, no, it's about it's not about who they play for, because Martin may well be out of the job by then. He may well have left by the time that the young ones come through to the senior side. So I think that helped to kind of to kind of um, temper reactions. Would you be in the same, the same camp as myself that uh, I was delighted that uh, Michael O'Neill got an extension because uh, Northern Ireland, OK, didn't get the results, but I, I think Michael is, is a good manager for Northern Ireland. I think uh, he's, made a, he's made a few right calls. He's made a few proper sound bites, in my opinion, on certain issues, and he hasn't been afraid to face issues. Yeah. I think he's good for Northern Ireland. And, you know, if he gets a few results along the way, all the better. Yeah, well, I mean, he's only had that one win, um, uh, well, which, uh, Russia, which is disappointing. Bad, but not, not too bad to, yeah. to, to win against Russia, obviously. Um, the results don't tell even half the story of the thinking of why Michael was offered um, a contract extension and agreed that. Um, I think I think it's a genius stroke on Patrick Nelson's behalf and he'll tell you that I don't often, <laughs> I'm not often so complimentary about him. Um, but 
you know, I think I think it was a great move, really, really good. I'm a big fan of Michael um, as a person. I get on with him very, very well. He was very cagey to start with, very, very cagey. Um, was very prickly in his in his early days, um, but two years on now, that that's changing. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's great. I mean, anyone who can get Johnny Evans to turn up to a friendly in Malta during the season. Um, must be doing something right. Uh, funny enough, I've seen him a few times, you know, at international, under 17 level. Down in Dungallon, we'll go down to watch it, uh, the lads there because of a couple of uh, young boys from the town who, who'd be involved in the squad. And, uh, you know, he's down there and he, he, he's, he's taking notes, he's looking. He, and yep. look, he's interested, he, he, he's talking to the young fella. So I think, as you say, away from the, the, the big the big glare of international, you know, the senior games, he's doing his business correctly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's genuinely interested in what's going on. He's young himself still. He's 43, 44. Um, and, you know, he'll, he'll be the first to admit that he's learning all the time. Um, he took the under 21s. You know, with um, when Stephen Robinson was tied yes. up with the under 17s, you know, he went along. He went along to that game and sort of, and you know, had a, had a quick chat with them and things before. Um, you know, other other coaches stood in stood in for Robbo on that occasion. But you know, so he's he's communicating at all levels. You know, all junior levels as well. And uh, you know, the work that Gemma Jilton's doing as well in terms of raising the profile of Northern Ireland and just trying to restore a little bit mm -hmm. of pride in, in playing for the jersey because that's what's so essential. Some people do still scoff and go, I'm sure it's only Northern Ireland in a Capello way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, you know, I mean, that's, that's why these guys have got to do so much work to do that. I just love his Windsor Park on the final whistle. <laughs> and he had to make that, you know, the longest five-yard walk of his life to go to shake hands to Michael O'Neill to say, some team beat us here. And I don't know who they were, but we're beating them. It was very, very funny. Reminded me of the time in Healy whenever we beat England, you know. But look, you're, you've got a couple of things, are great things planned for in 2014 as well, obviously, for the social club. It's very entertaining. It's very interesting. It's very enjoyable. It's very funny, you know what I mean? So obviously that's going to continue to pay for all the local fans as well too yeah we certainly hope so um it, it's it's been a hobby of ours more than anything else um we started back in the start of the 2011 2012 season um we put out our first podcast in uh, in august a founding member then was chris holt the glintoran man yeah. um who then of course moved to sheffield so we welcomed conor mclaughlin in uh, cliftonville man so we've got we've got fair representation we've got ards linfield um cliftonville and myself who and it's with Won't McLean's be and it's also <laughs> on new TV as well too for people who want to, who want to tune in there too. It is, yeah. McLean's have been fantastic supporting us. Really, really good. It's been, um, you know, they've opened so many doors to us and you can get it on the UTV website as well as uh, Bangor and Lisbon Community Radio Stations put it out. Um, and you can download from iTunes, of course, as well. I tell you, you're everywhere. <laughs> so, so, wait a minute, hang on, before I finish you off your tip, Linfield to win the Irish League, you're I saying think so. you think the Republic on, under uh, Meg, uh, under Martin O'Neill will probably qualify for the European Championship. Oh, you're putting, right? word, you're putting yeah, words yeah, in I'm my mouth now. <laughs>